And when you look at this entire curve with all these spikes, can you calculate how much of a vote that accounted for for Biden and how much for Trump? Close to 600,000. I think our, our figures were about 570 some odd thousand. For Biden? Correct. And how much for Trump? I think it was a little over 3,200. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Senator, uh, Colonel, and gentlemen, ladies. Uh, my name is Phil Waldron. I'm a retired Army Colonel, 30 years. I uh, spent the first half of my career just like uh, Colonel Mastriano here as a uh, cavalry officer conducting armed reconnaissance, counter reconnaissance. Last half of my career uh, spent in information warfare uh, as a, as a uh, psychological operations officer and information operations officer, uh, conducted uh, computer network operations. Uh, electronic warfare, special electronic warfare, um, deception, counter deception, and OPSEC, and a couple of other uh, specialties. Sir, ah, sorry. Ah. <laughs> you still got a Stetson in his purse. <laughs> uh, so I spent most of my, all of my time as an operations officer. Um, my perspective looking at this. Uh, this problem set is how to break in, how to break it, how to destroy it, how to manipulate it. And um, my team has been researching this specific issue since uh, August, but we're working with another team that's been uh, intently working on this problem set, the voting machine manipulation for two years since the Ted Cruz and Beto race in uh, Texas in 2018 and the uh, Kentucky governor's race where there were significant anomalies observed. And I'd like to add that there are many, many more teams like ours, small, uh, small teams that are joined in this fight and uh, they're throwing the flag um, left and right. So there's, there's a lot of folks who are recognizing anomalies. The voting systems in the US uh, and in Pennsylvania were built to be manipulated. They've been used in elections around the world um, and stolen elections uh, around the world in Venezuela, Italy, Argentina, Singapore, Bolivia as close as uh, two weeks ago. The Philadelphia uses ES and S, Pittsburgh uses Dominion, other counties in, in uh, Pennsylvania use uh, Dominion and other systems. So what's, uh, what's the real deal? So all of these election systems have a, a common DNA. Uh, SGO Smartmatic um, sold Sequoia voting systems to Dominion in 2010, and then the Diebold uh, company spun off premier election systems to Dominion uh, as a result of an antitrust suit. So the bottom line is that these systems have similar code and similar functions. Um, and, and just so you know, uh, I know there have been statements um, to the contrary, but I personally debriefed the son of a Cuban intelligence officer who had firsthand knowledge of uh, Hugo Chavez's family members who told him not to worry about the populist threat against Maduro's election in Venezuela quote unquote, that it was guaranteed. Their father invested the money to build the SGO voting machine system. So I have no reason to doubt this gentleman. He's uh, sworn an affidavit to this effect. Uh, but uh, that's, that's the root of the, uh, the SGO voting machines. So these systems are not what you've been told. They are connected to the internet and servers outside of the US. They're connected from top to the bottom in the middle. There is no transparency, as, as uh, our, our uh, previous witnesses met, uh, mentioned, as to how the voter information is processed, how and where it's stored. The voting record is able to be modified and or deleted by operators, administrators, and outside threats. Operators can assign votes for write-in ballots, blank ballots, or error ballots in large numbers so that they can be directed toward one candidate or another at the operator's or supervisor's uh, discretion. And many experts have published uh, how easily these machines can be hacked to, mid, to manipulate votes. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of our white hat hackers um, previously discovered uh, a malware that's present on the servers that captures every login and every password of every operator down to the precinct level that logs into one of these systems. It's just like giving your, the password to your bank account out uh, putting it on the dark web. It's not gonna be there very long. And just so you, you probably are all aware, on 30 September, uh, an election uh, storage facility was robbed in your state. 30 USB devices were stolen and a laptop. Those, uh, those USB devices more than likely had uh, encryption devices 
and you've just heard another previous witness um, talk about the, the, the non-standard use of, of the USB uh, storage devices. So these systems, uh, in a nutshell, allow authorized and unauthorized users to cancel votes, shift votes, preload votes, vote blank ballots, all in real time and in large numbers. They're connected from the top to the bottom. So one bad actor or a team of bad actors can have equally negative inputs. It's been described uh, by a, uh, uh, another uh, person in another state that we're working with, uh, just like the lotto. Whoever, whoever organizes the lotto is always going to win. It's controlling the numbers and it's controlling the margins. Our experts uh, and other academics believe that up to 1.2 million Pennsylvania votes could have been altered or fraudulent. This is what we discovered in the last 22 days. Really only a detailed forensic analysis of the actual machines and software will truly show how many Pennsylvania citizens have had their civil rights violated. So to use these type of machines with little or no audit trails, uh, little or no transparency of how the votes are processed, where they go, where they're stored, will never leave the public satisfied that we truly have a representative democracy. Uh, I'd like to correct something the mayor said. I am not a statistician. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a combat officer and I uh, didn't do well in math. <laughs> but uh, I, I can understand the numbers that, that he put out earlier. Um, I want to, want to share with you one chart. I believe it's in your, in your package. So what our team uh, has, has done is focused on the spike anomalies. And these are events where a numerical amount of votes are processed in a time period that's not feasible or mechanically possible under normal circumstances. Um, I believe that uh, Greg Stenstrom mentioned earlier the processing of these ballots through machines. There's a, a manufacturer's specified rate of speed that a number of ballots can image, uh, be imaged and processed. Uh, those, um, these spike anomalies in this chart really show where, where for us to look forensically to actually determine what happened with these votes. Um, our team has, has looked at, at these systems and there are a dozen ways to, to interdict the voting process uh, in these issues, whether, whether it's mail-in ballot manipulations, they, they can scan and allocate votes, uh, blank votes, uh, whether it was a 70,000 votes left in the uh, back room. Uh, there's, there's just lots of ways to interdict these, uh, these systems. So with that, I'll uh, answer any, any potential questions. Thank you. Next panel, please. Can I just uh, yes, sir. ask him to clarify one or two things? When, yeah. when we look at this uh, Pennsylvania fixing the vote chart that they all have, could you explain at the very beginning what that line means, Biden injection? So at the very, the very beginning of the, uh, the chart where there's a circle, it says on election day, uh, what that indicates is there is a spike in uh, loaded votes, uh, uh, 337,000 plus or minus of some votes that were added in there in one big batch. So that was uh, an anomaly in the reporting. Normally you would expect to see a smooth curve going up, not any, uh, not any big, big spikes. Uh, that's kind of what, uh, what Greg was talking about, the, the anomalies of loading and uh, uploading those, uh, those votes. So that big spike that uh, occurs there is a prime indicator of fraudulent voting. And that's 604,000 votes in 90 minutes, is that right? Correct, this is uh, 300 and, uh, 337 votes, 337,000 votes in that, uh, that, in that, in that, that period of time. Yes. And when you look at this entire curve with all these spikes, can you calculate how, how, how much of a vote that accounted for for Biden and how much for Trump? Close to 600,000. I think our, our figures were about 570 some odd thousand that uh, all those spikes represent over time. For Biden? Correct. And how much for Trump? I think it was a little over 3,200. <laughs> now, just to, just to go back to your original your original document, this one pager that they all have. 
mail-in ballots counted without being observed. Those are the ballots we were talking about that were not observed in Allegheny County and in, and in, and in Philadelphia. Correct. Is that right? 682,770. Now, this is the part that is a mystery. Mailed ballots sent out 1,823,148. But when you go to the count of the final count of the vote, there are 2,589,242 mail-in ballots. What, what happened? How, how, do you, how do you account for the 700,000 mail-in ballots that appeared from nowhere? So our, our uh, cyber team uh, uses white hat hacking techniques. They gather a lot of public, uh, publicly available information, and that information was from the Secretary of State's website. Um, that website uh, has been updated as late as 1116 this morning with provisional and mail-in ballots. So those numbers are still changing. Uh, they changed last night, so it's a continual target. And this that, is 22 days after the election. That, that number, the uh, 2 point, um, the 2.5 million number is, uh, is no longer on the website. It's just been taken off? It's not there anymore. Is there any explanation <laughs> for why it's been taken off? There is no annotations. But the, um, has, has there been a change made in the 2,589,242 mail-in votes that have been counted in the total vote? I'd, I'd have to check the, the Secretary of State's website as of And could you also check and see, have, is there any change in the 1,823,148 1 ballots that were sent out? The mailed out ballots number seems to be holding steady. And could, was there any other method of producing ballots other than sending them out? Not that uh, we're aware of, unless as previous uh, uh, witnesses of testimony that uh, the potential for multiple ballot counts. So ballots could have and been Have you ever gotten twice. a chance to examine any of these ballots? No, that's, uh, that would be part of the forensic uh, process. Uh, one suggestion, uh, whoever does the analysis is uh, using um, paper and ink analysis with a, a micro photo spectrometer. That would analyze the, the ink on those ballots to see if they were mass produced. So in addition to the 682,770 ballots that were entered without a single inspection of any kind, there also appear to be something like 700,000 ballots, mail-in ballots, that were never sent out, that were counted. There are, there are noted discrepancies in the, in the Secretary's That's a pretty big discrepancy. Yes, sir. And that's been there 